week, I mentioned that in these Sundays of Easter season, we've sort of moved a shift, rather, shifted from a, hearing about accounts of the resurrected Jesus appearing to disciples and other people to faith, learning about faith, and thinking about what faith looks like. And so in what we heard this morning, I thought about borrowing an old line, um, so what's love got to do with it? What's love got to do with faith? Well, part of, I think, that makes this difficult is that these verses that we heard from the Gospel of John were sort of plucked out of context. And I think that the context of where this happened is important for us to sort of understand what Jesus was talking about. This actually took place, these, uh, this conversation took place on the night before Jesus was arrested while he was having dinner, or as he was having dinner, with his disciples. It was the, the celebration of the Last Supper. It was the last meal before he was taken away and tried and executed. And so there are two things that happened specifically before this. And the first of them is that while they were having dinner, Jesus got up and he tied a towel around himself. And he knelt down and washed his disciples' feet. Which in itself was an indication that roles were reversing. Because that was not something that the master was to do, was to wash the other's feet. That was the task of a servant. And Peter, good old Peter, says, No way, Jesus, are you going to do this for me because you are the master. You are not going to serve me in this way. And Jesus was quick to explain to Peter, This is about me showing an example of a leveling, if you will, of the playing field. That no one of you disciples has more gifts or more love or has more to do than any other of you disciples. And then the second thing that came, came just before these words is a conversation that Jesus had about the one who was going to betray him. That he would be at the table with them, the very one or one of them, who had just heard Jesus and witnessed Jesus' example about servanthood and serving and loving one another, was the very one who ran out to go and find the ones who would come and arrest Jesus and lead him away to be tried. And now, just as he left, which is how our reading began, Jesus makes it very clear that he has put a new spin, if you will, on an old commandment. That the disciples are to love one another just as Jesus has loved them. And this is before he has died and risen again. And so I can imagine the disciples sort of sitting around thinking, what in the world does this love look like? What is it that Jesus mean, means for love to feel and look and be and live like? And my mind just completely went like, I don't know what love looks like. <laughs> I mean, after all, love is a very interesting emotion, right? I mean, we talk about we love things, right? We love the car. We love the house. We love winning at sports. We love doing great in school. And we talk about loving people. We love our family. We love our friends. We love our church. We love our job. It's hard to understand what love really is when, when we use love in such a broad way. I mean, after all, we can really understand the effects of greed and hate. We see it all the time. But the effects of love aren't quite so flashy. I mean, after all, love is a lot more quiet. We don't always understand love 
as much as we feel love. I mean, you would think that Jesus would have been flashy as he talked about loving others and serving others, and that he welcomed sinners, and that he chose those who were flawed to be his disciples. But love isn't flashy. Love serves by example. Ways that show other people that we care about them. And love shows by being there with others. By helping them to understand that we don't think that we're better than them or that they are better than us. Love lives quietly in ways that we might even miss if we weren't looking for it. And so when Jesus says to his disciples, you love one another just as I have loved you, he's trying to help them understand that love is more of an understanding of trying to be patient with one another, realizing that unless we're in the shoes of someone else, we can't really understand where they are. And love means and love lives in ways that help to bring hope to a very hurting world. After all, in the end, as Jesus said to love, he knew that that was what would give hope and transformation to a broken and hurting world that the disciples would go out into. Has that really changed?